Grin. Zeri, Yumi, and four junglers taken off the table means that it's pretty easy to pick up Melio when that's left open. TSM are going to respond. They're saying, all right, you want Melio? We'll take Lucian Nami. But that means Aphelios will be locked in beside that new support pick along with Annie in the first half of the draft for FlyQuest. Okay, moving through it quickly here. Looking very spicy. I definitely like the FlyQuest side of it. TSM, though, Hovering around with some Jarvan. Jarvan was buffed a long time ago, but more recently, both Gore Drinker and Stride Breaker got buffed. Gore Drinker is definitely the far more popular one on him, but pretty, pretty direct uh, buff and usage for him as well. So do like that. If, if we have the Jarvan though, I always look for more to go with it. You know, the Cataclysm is nice and Nami wave. It makes it easier to hit your Nami wave because it's a little slow moving. Um, but if they get they get something mid that can really pair with the Jarvan, then um, that, that would bring the full synergy together here to, to really have that oomph because uh, otherwise you're looking at, um, you know, some sort of setup there to gank the Annie. If you can, sometimes if you can gank the Annie early, you can take away the Annie's possibility of roaming around. So I like the fact that TSM went for their jungler in the first half of the draft because there was already four jungle bans between the teams out of those initial six. Viego is going to make another jungle ban here in second half. TSM also going to take Cassante off the table with neither side having focused top laners yet. Grog is banned away so they don't get that matchup against the Annie. I will say the Sejuani is still up though and Sejuani has uh, regained a lot of popularity as just a tank jungle that's very serviceable. Mm. And since you do have support Enchanter meta going on right now. It does put a lot of emphasis on on those engaged junglers So maybe that's the angle there for Spika. Spika does play a lot of those tank junglers yeah. for FlyQuest All right, TSM, what's it gonna be here? It's got to be one solo laner and I would have to expect that it's the mid lane since they already know who the opponent will be there in the Annie So what does Insanity want to take into this? The Gragas was banned out LeBlanc. Okay locked in. So we're not there yet but next patch 1312 that is live right now. Yes. Static Shiv gets a nice buff for the early game. And that's and, what everybody's doing. And people have been doing the Static Shiv, uh, Ludens, and Lich Bane LeBlanc. Been giving you a bunch of wave clear plus popping people. Uh, Bob is having a lot of success with that in solo queue, and he's a super duper long time LeBlanc main. Uh, so I I don't know. You, you could try and do it now a little bit early. Before the changes, uh, you're just going to have a little bit less damage for your shiv early on. Uh, don't know if he, if he really wants to commit to that, but that would be super exciting because that's even something that is super powerful right now on live that you can do at home. So how do we feel about the Rek'Sai locked in here for So I'm actually a big supporter of Rek'Sai. Okay. I, I know there are a lot of detractors. But hey, that's me, detractor. <laughs> detractor number the, one. The the compensation buffs that Rek'Sai got for the deletion of uh, Prowler's Call, basically, the, the deletion of the dash, right. which, were, which was the part that Rek'Sai cared about so you could stay burrowed and, and get your dash uh, knock up off. The compensation buffs were quite massive. And like I said, the Stride Breaker and Gore Drinker buffs to the other, the, the fighter items were quite nice. You just move right over to Stride Breaker on Rek'Sai. Um, and you can actually provide a decent amount of value and more tanky than you were before. So you can still function uh, decently in team fights, And you can really have some gank angles that you need to take advantage of the actual ganking angles and your flash gank potential early on in the game. You know, Rek'Sai is one of the few junglers that can come from like behind the mm. bottom lane, super long wall or uh, mirrored top lane style. But... Um, due to the tunnel and being able to, to come up with your knockoff. Afterwards, anyways, though, we went very, very quickly ahead here to the double tanks locked in for top lane for that top lane snooze fest matchup again. Well, yeah, you've got impact up there on the Orn. Hans are going to be piloting the Mal fight. Remember, this is also what he played yesterday in their game versus Team Liquid. Very unfortunately for him, Pioshik ended up getting the perfect angle for a gank top around level four or so. It set Hanser behind for the rest of the game, and he just struggled to have much of an impact past that. Obviously, hope Hoping for a better one here today against FlyQuest that, like we were talking about, is not coming out strong. FlyQuest was the team yeah. in... Let's get onto the rift. Let's do it. All right. FlyQuest going out as a four-man clump. TSM. Oh, do it. Also fight, 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 bringing fight, fight, fight. the clump. Come on, guys. Just a little bit further forward. 30 seconds into minion spawn. Don't want to mess with an anti-stun. No nope. on. All right, Chime able to get some Spell Thief's action going. That's 20 gold in the bank. Nice, 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 nice. Bringing them up to a nice 20 gold lead. But for quest progress. So one thing that I'm going to be looking at here for this game, for TSM, is to 
make sure that everybody's on the same page going in and fighting together. Yesterday, we had a couple of moments that looked like they could have been very different if they were a little bit more coordinated. Some of those were shut down by good play from their opponents. When you look at the mid lane, Harry had some awesome charms on the Ari that stopped some of the follow-up from Chimes and Gages. But there was also some Haunter plays trying to dive the enemy backline when nobody else was in range. So for yeah. TSM, I need to see everybody not just on the same page, man. I want them reading the same paragraph. Really focus on this. All right, well, good things for the bottom lane. They've already got that lead because Lucian also with the first strike got first strike money. So big, big. Ooh. Spell Thieves and first strike. One gold less than his support, though. <laughs> Chime is the richest man on the map. Oh, never mind. It's all, it already changed. <laughs> Professionally speaking, can I one-trick Vagar to Masters? As long as you believe in yourself, you can do anything. I played Skarner to Diamond 1, and Vagar is way better than Skarner, so you can do it. Don't worry. <laughs> Person Love with it. this sign. Believe in yourself. I've decided to become a Volley Bear one-trick, so, you know, we all, we all follow our own paths. Things, things change over time. Yeah, you just got to follow your heart. That's what League of Legends is all about. That and actually winning, but, you know. Skarner and Vagar and Volley Bear. Sometimes they don't win, but you got to do it anyway. Speaking of junglers, both junglers scouted by wards right now. Jarvan as he passes towards uh, the Raptors. My favorite ward here, especially for um, even solo queues. Super, super valuable for your mid laner to go up and get Raptor wards like that on enemy jungle. Uh, but does see the Jarvan, who has a lot of early ganking potential. Meanwhile, the Rek'Sai, similar uh, sort of early potential there on the champion, scouted by the red buff ward. So they both know opposite red buff side starts. No big surprise there. Yep. Uh, both these champions loving uh, to start red buff side. So we'll be tracking this one through as Jarvan now with that red buff comes over and just wards the entrance here mm -hmm. as bottom lane pushes up for FlyQuest. Yep, Prince and Vulcan with total control over this lane going to crash a massive amount of minions into that tier one turret. The Lucian and Nami not fighting them back here nice and early. Melio's power, I talked a little bit about it yesterday when I was casting with Azale, and he was talking about how Melio can really warp these small trades back and forth during the laning phase that you're normally used to the spacing on, but because of the bonus attack range from the cozy campfire, it makes it so that closeness isn't what you expect it to be, and it can be a lot harder to deal with since the champion's so new. And I would say, e even when people get used to it, because, uh, you know, you know, practicing on live and stuff and, and having people play against it. Oh! Uh, that okay. was an attempted different button, for sure. Had to be. <laughs> Had to be. I don't know what button he, it was, but... Did he just place a ward or something? Okay, well, that was definitely supposed to be a different button, but no flash on Rek'Sai Flowers. This greatly diminishes our chances of getting my <laughs> beloved Flash Rek'Sai First Blood play. Very difficult to pull that off without the Flash. Yes, this is yeah, severely so. going to impact the ability to combo those two skills together. Uh, unfortunate there for Spica and for FlyQuest as Boogie's going to try to make something happen here in the bottom lane. Haunter versus Impact in top side. Oh. Haunter's got 200 HP, but he's stepping out further back away from the turret. Spica Spica's going to dive follow. in here. Yep. Nice. Can't flash follow, but his top hey. laner can. FlyQuest, first blood. No flash necessary, Flowers. Haunter is only at 250 HP or so on the on the Malphite there, and it's a good tunnel placement. Sometimes you, you see the newer Rek'Sai players or people who have not played it recently poor tunnel placement and then they have to chase backwards, but he goes right between them, so he's still in range. You can get slightly more range on your unburrow, by the way, if you manually do it and press the W instead of actually auto attacking on someone. So he gets the knock up there, keeps him in range. Impact does have flash, so Impact collects the first blood for flight. Does that still count as a flash first blood Rek'Sai play? Because all three of those elements are true I'm in the say play. Yes. Okay. Well, then we got exactly what you were and hoping I'm going to stretch the timer on that first blood play and say it began in the bottom side river when he flashed out of Pixel Brush. Okay, the it flash was, was part of it. It was a five head long con to, to get the first blood top. Because that impacted his decision making to go top because that's the only place he's getting the kill without a flash, right? Okay. I'm with you here. We can uh, good because I think you're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it'll work out. FlyQuest up 800 gold here, thanks to that, plus the advantages they've built for themselves just through farming. I mean, they're up everywhere across the rift right now. Boogie's going to see if maybe there's something he can get accomplished up here in the top side. Haunts are just now hitting level six as Impact charges forward. Bellows Breath also used there to trade into Haunts or find a lot of damage on him. Ulti, they're seconds. summoning up that Ornhorn nice. back in mid lane. I'm not sure what's going on here. Impact Ooh. might just make this a one for one. Not quite enough damage. Vikla did summon up the Tibbers back in mid, but Insanity's fine. 
Yeah, the only the only thing I'm watching for there is Hanser, hold your ultimate to interrupt Orn for second activation on the Orn ultimate. He does that. He gets the Malphite ultimate. Good timing. So Orn can't get his uh, ram to go right back through and sticks around to get that kill back too. That is that is some top lane tenacity right there. Hanser sticks around even though he was very close to to dying there to the Orn. He gets that kill back. FlyQuest, they'll, they'll be happy with their bottom side dragon off of that bot push. Yep, they got the bot push. They have control down there the whole game thus far. The enemy jungler just showed top, so easy first Drake of the game for FlyQuest. Nice and early, six and a half minutes into the game. Again, a reminder, teleports have already been used by both our top laners. They should be back up and ready to go by the time that second one spawns, and they will be unleashed by then. So maybe we're going to get to have ourselves an 11-minute 5v5 team fight. I can only hope. These, uh, these top laners do have some good ultimates for those team fights, Flowers, mm -hmm. so you may get your wish. Meanwhile, checking back in on the bottom side and that push. The Milio positioning here from Vulcan, being able to easily stand behind Prince, buff him up, allow for the push here on Red White Gun, and easy recall for them. So another timing advantage for FlyQuest, getting their recall right back off first. And with the upgraded Berserker Greaves already on Prince, he also can walk back quicker. Milio gonna go out through mid lane here. Looks like Vulcan looking for a possible top side Rift Herald play. We've got 30 seconds on the spawn of on the spawn of Rift Herald. And FlyQuest used that bottom side push on the bottom wave to get the early jump on it. It is very, very early here. They'll be there ready to to hug it on arrival. Looks like they're going to collect topside minion wave first. Yep. As Rek'Sai is going to clear up topside camps too. And both teams making the call to bottom lane come fight for this. So you don't even have to have your teleports for that th those big fights, Flowers. You well, are going to get the party up on top side of the hap. Uh, oh, actually, Impact stays bottom. Yeah, okay, Impact's, never mind. Impact's on the other side of the map. He's staying bottom instead. It's just Hanser. Well, Prince and Vulcan are both level 6. Chime is level 6. Turtle is only level 5. So TSM are down an ultimate compared to FlyQuest. Orn's walking, so Impact is walking his way up. On the side of FlyQuest here. Can I get this done? Prince firing off the Moonlight Vigil. Nice engage from Haunter with a follow-up from Boogie. They try to take out the FlyQuest AD carry, but it's not enough just yet. Rek'Sai ulti back on the Boogie. Speak is still looking for it, but he flashes away. The Orn Horn is here, but Turtle's already got the kill on Spika. Insanity's in the back line, wanting Vikla, but he doesn't quite have the damage. He'll barely miss out. Now they've all got to disengage. TSM. They got Herald. They take the Herald, they take the kill, and they take their lead. Oh my goodness. They were there first with their top laner flyers and even though Orn is walking up in the river you see him now on the mini map Hunter says we've got the timing advantage on the AD carry here they get all summoners out of Prince then he flashes back over towards the pit here Spika then with his Rek'Sai ultimate following meant he was in a dangerous spot does go down and insanity almost able to burst down Vikla too who gets away with the anti shield in the end Boogie also picked up the eyeball after they were able to secure it. So TSM were able to get the objective. We're able to get the kills here. Let's see what they can do with it. Very early first item full completion for Wild Turtle as well compared to everybody else in the game. Has that Kraken Slayer online. We'll see how much that impacts any upcoming fights here as we are still waiting on a lot of important ultimates to come back up. Everybody except for Insanity waiting on those cooldowns on the side of TSM. Same story being told except it's unanimous on the side of FlyQuest as Insanity does keep trying to trade here with Vikla. Normally I would say missing out on that Annie kill in the previous team fight for Insanity would be one of those tilter moments, but he also lived with about as much <laughs> HP as he missed the kill by, so uh, I think you call that fair. Yeah, yeah, like, okay, okay, fine. <laughs> Dippers was following him, burning him, getting a little dicey there. Rek'Sai is hovering around for the counterplay here. Uh, part of the buffs, compensation buffs, were some vision buffs. Uh, the, the radar ping more frequently lets you more accurately judge your your Q snipes and then if you do snipe them with the with the burrowed Q it, it gives you the vision longer mm -hmm. um, but he's eventually sussed out of the bottom side they ward the alcove and Spika knows he's been revealed so he has to crawl away while Boogie goes for his nicely done Boogie was waiting to get his cataclysm cooldown back up it just arrived and Vikla look at the left side of your screen no Tibbers cooldown TSM times that beautifully and they pick up a kill in the mid lane yeah Boogie positioning on the control ward in mid lane while they get the reveal on speaker bottom lane chasing him out of that uh, alcove meant Boogie knew he had 
uh, you know, a good timer on how quickly Spica would even get mid before they could have any sort of counter gank. Pull the trigger, that nice little window between your Cataclysm coming up yeah. and before the Rek'Sai gets there. Beautiful, beautiful timing here for TSM. They get the kill, they get the Rift Herald drop, and Insanity is that much happier, even though he still has not gotten the actual last hit on the kill. Yeah. <laughs> got the Rift Herald uh, towards his lane, so he got his share of the turret plate money. And now that Boogie's got that Gore Drinker completed, the Jarvan's feeling really good. You were talking about the buff to the items. Yeah. Jarvan always kind of loved this thing in the first place. So it makes you feel a lot better too about any of those times that you would run into Spica just in neutral territory, maybe try to contest something. Speaking of things to contest, we do have the second Drake of the game live right now. Remember that FlyQuest got the first one when Boogie made the gank up in the top side that did get TSM a kill, but it left the other end of the map open to FlyQuest control. This time around though, the other story is gonna be told as there is nobody from FlyQuest nearby, so TSM can take this one. Early Ocean Drakes feel pretty good. This one's not super early because laning phase is almost over at this point anyway, but it feels nice to stop your opponents from stacking. Keep that at one-to-one. -one. Mountain Soul going to be the name of the game this time around as Wild Turtle puts a lot of damage into Prince. Yeah, nice little chunk there as they have their jungler around for pressure too, so FlyQuest have to fully respect it. Boogie able to drop the extra control ward here, clears out vision through Tribrush. Allows Turtle to finish off on the push here. Get one more into the tower before they go for their reset. And Spica does see that ward. Mm -hmm. Topside impact versus Haunter impact with a around 20 farm lead, but there will be more minions for Haunter to try to pick up here. Spica coming into the bottom lane, finds itself on a control ward. So Chime and Turtle can disengage this one. Turtle, not a lot of mana to work with. So even if they wanted to try to stick around for some kind of an outplay, it would be hard to find, I would think. Prince and Vulcan just trying to shove this wave up. Interesting little mind game oh time there, and they're going to go for it. Yeah, Prince is running back towards the tri brush, but Haunter's actually here, and Boogie's ready for the follow up. Oh. The Prince has fallen from the throne, and it's Boogie the Usurper. The Haunter Boogie 1 2 with these ultis. Haunter nailing them this time around. He teleports in, is going to give turret play money uh, up to impact the Orn on top side, but very successful to go make the play for your team. Like this rotation for TSM Insanity, because there's extra minions here up at the tower, rotates from mid lane to come handle it. Hanser picks up the counter tower plate on bottom side while they get the reset and Lucian should be able to get mid to answer the, the hole that Insanity left by rotating up towards top just in time there. So nice, nice stuff here from TSM to rotate around the map, not drop too much and still make the commitment and get their successful kill. Yeah, TSM's feeling solid now. We've got three, two, one, Zero seconds left before the plates fall. That's always one of the checkpoints in the game that I like to look at the state of things. Even on Drake's, no turrets taken by either side. Richest man in the game is Impact's Orn, but then the next three are wearing TSM colors. And as a team, they're up 1.3 thousand gold. It's not an amazing lead. It's not something that you just snowball the rest of the game from in most cases, but it's a great spot to be in. Yeah, and it kind of sucks for FlyQuest that, that there is a concentration of gold onto Orn early. Uh, because Orn early, that, that gold isn't going to do a lot for you. And we're well far away from the point in the game where Impact starts to buy Rolexes for everybody else on his team and, <laughs> and upgrade their items. So it's 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 really just a, a little bit rough as far as the, the damage dealers here for FlyQuest trying to scrounge things up. You can see it in inventory. I mean, just look at Prince versus Wild Turtle right now. Yeah. That is a, a massive difference in damage, but FlyQuest will make the trade. They go the Rift Herald top side for bottom and mid push, and their whole bottom jungle also being taken away. Yep, that bottom lane tier one turret, also the first turret of the game to completely fall, so that extra bonus gold will go the way of TSM. Haunts are in the enemy jungle, clearing out some of the wreck side tunnels, clearing out some of the wards. Even though there was a completed item advantage for the side of TSM concerning both bottom lane champions compared to their counterparts, because Malphite was down there in bottom lane because he had no teleport CD. It's not really feasible to go for the Herald fight in a 4v5. You don't have that level of a gold advantage just yet. But that gold advantage has grown now since I mentioned it a minute ago, up to 2,000. Now, FlyQuest needs to get some value out of this second Herald that they found, but it's TSM once again putting the pressure first, looking to bring their turret lead up to two. Yeah, looks good. They've got full pressure. They've got bottom side red quadrant jungle fully warded, so they even see impact moving up. Nice coordination for this TSM team. Yep, just turn around, smack him back a little bit on the way out. 
and two and a half thousand gold now. TSM continuing to build these economic leads here. FlyQuest needs to make sure they don't let this get too far out of control. Yes, the game's still doing all right right now. You've got some pretty incredible scaling with Aphelios, with Melio, with Orn. But you also have Rek'Sai in the jungle, which is traditionally one of the weaker scaling champions in League of Legends. And you can't just let TSM keep building up these advantages. Next Dragon is in under 45 seconds. Is this an angle for FlyQuest to fight, or do you think they yield this one? Uh, I mean, they, they actually might fish around for it. I do think it's a bit dangerous, but it is definitely contestable because they actually just got some item completions in for them. So they at least have everybody on at least one item. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there are definitely possibilities here with them moving in and trying to retake vision. But the problem is they've got no sweeper activations and only one control ward. So even though they're here early, they can't kill all this TSM vision. They can't fully utilize the control that they think they have as we've got a sweeper stare down. You know, Hanser seeing Spika and Vikla there. The reason TSM doesn't want to jump on anything right now, remember Boogie was back in the base. He took a recall to make sure that he got a chance to buy before this dragon fight would go down. Let's take a look at summoner spells. All five flashes up for TSM. All five flashes up for FlyQuest. Vulcan's actually still slightly off cooldown. I think it just came back. Yeah, there we go. Thank you very much, Observers. All right, so everybody's got those ready to go. Obviously for Jarvan, you hate to see that on the enemy team. But who's going to find the angle here? Right now, it's TSM already starting this up. They've pulled it outside of the vision of the Scuttle Crab that FlyQuest got for themselves. So now stepping forward, Spika's gonna see it. We could have a 50-50 Drake flip here. TSM taking that dragon nice and low. They've already secured it. Impact's gonna take a lot of damage here, soaking that up as TSM fires on him. The Rift Herald was summoned up mid lane. FlyQuest should be able to at least grab the tier one turret there. That's their first structure of the game claimed from TSM. At least getting back some of that gold, but TSM will use that extra manipulation of vision that they had in the bot side where they're playing around that scuttle crab, getting the early enough start on the Drake to force the issue and secure that objective in return. Yep, TSM definitely happy with that one. Securing this dragon without Spika getting too close, then even getting the chunk there on impact, chasing him out. They force double teleports up top side, so Insanity goes to put the pressure on. Impact answers with his own to try and clear the wave and, and keep that defense up for now so they don't continue to bleed gold. But TSM slowly marching this one forward uh, quite nicely behind Boogie here. Done a very good job on this Jarvan, and he's even picked up the extra stopwatch for more playmaking ability. You can survive so long with your Gore Drinker, with your Conqueror already on the Jarvan getting in there, but also with the stopwatch now. The possibilities that we've already seen with the Malphite plus Jarvan combinations has been very, very reliable. Yeah. And putting a decent amount of pressure onto Prince and onto FlyQuest team fighting position. It is one of the weaknesses of that Aphelios, the lack of mobility. When you've got Malphite and Jarvan and LeBlanc all going at you, along with the Nami artillery wave, it can be kind of difficult to find the right position in these fights. Yeah, I mean, usually the, the Milio kickback is super annoying. That fireball coming at you, but yeah. both Malphite and Jarvan with ultimates can go unstoppable. So they will get to their destination. You remember back when Shivana could be knocked out of her ulti? I really wish <laughs> yeah. Melio was in the same version of the game as that, so that Shivana could try to fly at him and he just kicks her in the mouth. In a basic ability. With his Q. Uh-oh, we've got Hunter in trouble. Uh-oh, buddy. This isn't where he wanted to be. He's going to try to create some space here. Wanted to turn around for the seismic shard to get some movement speed, but Spika ducking away from that one. Ultra Mega Fire Kick provides enough slow to just lock him down. So Fly Quest. They're going to get a kill here in the bottom side, but the trade was the top lane tier one turret taken by Insanity. Space created. Space created. And they were just about, when they started the play, it was about 15 to 20 seconds before Baron spawns too. So it wasn't like TSM could instantly start up Baron seeing three people bottom side going for their Malphite because mm -hmm. uh, the timing window there was a little bit of extra leeway time for FlyQuest to know, all right, we have time to kill this Malphite and then still cover if TSM try and do anything risky there rushing it down. So good little look here from FlyQuest to poke around and at least get something back towards their favor, back towards this game. TSM now, Turtle's level 11. He's got two fully completed items with the Gale Force now online. He just picked up the red buff from the little magic orb that now spawns. Vikla's gonna 
look for a little bit of poke onto Boogie, but he's got enough shielding to keep him feeling plenty safe from that. As FlyQuest do feel like they've at least got some solid footing in the game here. It's not like they're just trapped on their own side of the map. Still seems like a pretty neutral state as they try to force their way forward, find some vision more aggressively in the TSM jungle. Spico thinking about maybe looking for Insanity here as Vikla and Prince are also going to follow up. Insanity can tell that something is amiss. He's going to back <laughs> all the way away from the Tier 1 turret. So I, I love the, this meta of, of popping emotes as junglers when you're going to, you know, towards ganking laners and stuff to see if they respond. Yeah. To try and check, uh, you know, if, if they knew, if they had you on vision happen. In the end, yeah, it's just tower trades here. Uh, top and bottom, outer one does go down. Secondaries are worth way more though. Um, so definitely beneficial for TSM. FlyQuest we're looking and hoping for a little bit more in that, but unable to fish around and get that LeBlanc. Well, we have under 60 seconds now until our next Drake. Over 3,000 gold lead for TSM. Item spike advantage, at least in the AD carry position. Top lane now even with the Sunfire and the Mythic done for both, but it is the Jack show for Haunter, so a bit more offensive power in that one compared to Radiant Virtue's strictly defensive bonuses. But I'm ready, man. We do have the Orn Evolution. The first ornament of the game is there. Radiant Virtue evolved for impact, so that's gonna alleviate some of the pressure of this gold lead. But that next Drake, if TSM gets it, then they're on soul point for the rest of the game. A mountain soul on Malphite, on Jarvan, that's not a good time mm. for FlyQuest. Mountain soul does work well with the mountain champion here. <laughs> not really the angle I was going for, but you know what? I'll take it. I can't dispute that. It works Simple out. connection. Yeah, it's just, it's an earth type with an earth type. <laughs> well, you get like a 50% damage bonus if you you have the type that matches the move. I think that's the Pokemon rules, but honestly, while, they, you know, as, mu as much as a scary thing it is uh, to give over the soul, uh, you don't want to risk anything on, on just Dragon number three, even though even the small ones stacking up here, pretty annoying, uh, yeah. like you're talking about, you know, magnifying these percentages for your resistances. So TSM, get this one up. Taunter, Haunter will be a tanky, tanky, tanky boy. Oh, speak a tag and chime there, but not anything else for FlyQuest to follow up on here. Rylai has completed full second item there for Vikla's Annie, so it's going to give him extra power for these chases. Potential multi-man slows with the AoE Tibbers in the middle of the fight, too, on top of the stun you would normally get. But we're going a while now without seeing anybody do a whole <laughs> lot. So for, for, and for FlyQuest side, uh, you know, I think that is positive play because we're, we're at Impact's ability to upgrade Prince's item now. Yeah. Next time he goes on screen with Prince, he can upgrade Gale Force, but they're actually gonna force on Baron. I like this from FlyQuest. They, they have Crescendum on Aphelios. At minimum, you should be able to force a TP here. The Baron's already down to under 4K, under 3K. Oh, that's flippable. We're just gonna have oh, a fight baby. for this. It's gonna be a smite fight, I would think. Vikla wants to go in on the side. The Baron damage has been paused. Vikla has to disengage back to the rest of his team as FlyQuest will be forced away from the Baron. You can see Prince walk oh. back up, tried to stop it from regenerating, but we're not gonna get any kills. Man, I wanted you like LeBlanc to jump over and help versus that Baron because it was at 2,200 and we're at 1,200 smites right now. Yeah. So you only need a little bit of help. Thousand damage extra from somebody to burn that sucker down and really send it into flip territory. But both of them hold off. Nobody wants to go for the full craziness. And so TSM are happy with that. They're like, fine, shove you off the Baron. We also will take an extra secondary turret. Oh, turtle, what in the hell? So the extra turret, great stuff, but the red buff is a step too far. Now we're looking at 32 seconds, no AD carry for TSM and FlyQuest. They are so happy to return to Baron and try and force this fight. What do they have for turn? They don't have Orn ultimate for turn because it was used to kill turtle, but they do have Vikla. Vikla? Using Tibbers to try to keep TSM away. Now Boogie's gonna get jumped on. He has to flash. Oh. Uses the combo to get himself out. But Spika goes all the way in and he finds the kill regardless. Haunts are still looking to provide some backup as Insanity takes out the enemy jungler. It's jungle for jungle so far. And now Haunts are soaking the damage here in the front as Prince is free firing. Nice re-engage! Haunts are turns it around! And Prince is 
smacked right upside the jaw. Vickla's got to try to run, but Insanity brings the distortion and walks away with a quadra kill. What AD carry meta, Flowers? No AD carry necessary for that quadra for TSM. Insanity does it himself. They, got, they signed him because Ruby isn't here, was slow to get over with the, with the I believe, visa issues. Insanity popping off here. TSM, they kite it all the way back, and Spica does ult for the extra kill, but they end up trading it. Look at this burst damage. He's trapped inside the, the Cataclysm, and Insanity plus Chime able to burst him down, and Hauntster's so tanky. With the double mountains, he bides his time, and he turns for a perfect ultimate there. Malphite ult into LeBlanc distortion. Goodbye. Nami buffing up the LeBlanc as well with the extra slows. Oh, my goodness. LeBlanc, 400 gold bounty on his head, four kills here, death cap imminent. Between spring playoffs and now this, FlyQuest has to be waking up in a cold sweat every night, dreaming about Malphite ultis in team fights that look like they should be won. <laughs> oh. Because this champion oh has proven to be such a thorn in the side for FlyQuest. It looked like they were in a great spot there. It looked like Turtle giving away that free death. The red buff might have been their ticket to completely swing this game the Genius. other direction. But Genius now, move. Man, five, yeah. head, five head bait to have them start Baron. Look, FlyQuest thought they were playing 4D chess, but uh. TSM was playing five dimensional <laughs> water polo, and they were just ready for whatever FlyQuest was thinking. Dude, water polo is actually such a sketchy, dangerous game. <laughs> Uh, and hey, whenever what do you I think that red buff play was? <laughs> whenever I played it, at least people will definitely kick under the water. Okay, that <laughs> that stuff you gotta you gotta have honorable friends <laughs> to be able to play that game. TSM though, they're very happy with this Baron buff, and they should be able to set themselves up for a pretty easy mountain. 27 seconds, flower. So Baron buff, shove FlyQuest inside their own base, then retreat back, collect their God Soul. Man, that Mountain Soul is going to turn this game so scary so fast. Turtle separated from the rest of TSM. Nice job dashing out of the way of the Ornhorn as Vikla tries to take somebody with him because he knows he's dead. Chime with a nice flash heal to get himself away as FlyQuest has tried to engage, but the engage has been spoiled by TSM. Insanity finds damage with the second distortion, but TSM know they don't need to overchase. They've killed the enemy mid, they didn't lose anybody, and the Mountain Soul just spawned. T SM, wow, Turtle dodges out of the second door and ultimate, doesn't get knocked up, and they immediately all group up around Vikla for the arrival. Chime flashing even at the end, does not give him the counter kill. Flowers, they, they're, they're just wrapping this one up. 6K plus the Mountain Soul. What are you gonna do about the Malphite now? That one, that, that ultimate is coming for your face. Prince does that flash right now. So they can hope for a a flat. <laughs> You're already looking at me like, don't feed me that cope. <laughs> no, I, I came up, I came up with a good analogy. You ever uh, back when you were in school? Okay, did you ever I'm take so. a test and you look at the first page and it's got one of them problems? You're like, I have no idea what to do with this. I'll come back later. That's Malphite right now. Well, Use the problem on the first page that shows up. You're saying, I don't know what to do about this. I'll come back later. Later is now. Time's running out. You got to turn the exam in. And the problem is, FlyQuest is about to flunk. Insanity locking down the Orn here. Normally, I get a little bit suspicious when teams commit to killing an Orn because it can be turned around pretty easily, but there's nothing else on the map to go for. It's not like Impact gets away from this one. TSM's gonna take a couple of extra seconds to beat him down. Impact wastes as much time of theirs as he can, but Insanity's still going unstoppable. 5-0 and 2 here on the mid lane LeBlanc. Yeah, the second problem on that test, not looking any easier, bro, because no. the LeBlanc is <laughs> five kills now, 500 gold bounty, 10 stacks in the seal. When he goes back to base, he also will have the death cap to magnify that AP. Newly buffed, by the way, uh, now 40%. Uh, with the extra magnifying on the ability power there. So, Insanity. Oh, Hanser. He's not concerned whatsoever. They jump on him. He's Malphite. It doesn't matter. He knows they can't overcommit to killing him, or the rest of TSM will just turn around and blast FlyQuest. The ulti from Aphelios looks barely more effective than an auto attack. Prince and the rest of FlyQuest struggling to do enough damage to hurt these two frontliners of TSM, especially through that Mountain Soul. It's a 7,000 gold lead, and they just took their first inhib. TSM are primed to win this game. All right, how much money does Insanity have? Can he go Death Cap and upgrade to a med? No, okay. 
not quite enough. <laughs> Just get the death cap. Yep. But I want to see a Medjai's uh, if the game lasts long enough. The hat will do it. He's got a stopwatch ready. So protect those stacks, flowers. He's got tremendous burst damage to follow up on this Malphite ultimate. We've already seen it earlier in the game. And that will continue. 552 AP. Mm. That's going to hurt. Yes. I mean, when you look at anybody on the enemy team that's not named Orn, where's the MR? Melio, zero. Aphelios, zero. Annie, zero. Rek'Sai, zero. That's four zeros. <laughs> that's That might be four body bags. Yeah, I think it's gonna be. If Insanity has any sort of a way into these fights, and you know that Hanser and Boogie are both looking to give him a first-class ticket to FlyQuest Health Bar City. Now, FlyQuest, the pressure's on. The Baron's spawning in under 60 seconds, and if you give this one away to TSM, the game's pretty much screwed. They're gonna have to find some sort of a way to pick their moment and go, because TSM have now taken out the last remaining Tier 2 turret from FlyQuest, and they're pushing into the base, looking for another Tier 3. They get the teleport, that means Impact's going to be forced to join up with FlyQuest now as Hanser does use the Unstoppable Force to get away. He knows that TSM does not want to have to fight with that Tier 3 turret still so healthy and so close. So he's just going to burn the ulti early. They'll play around not having it here, not go for the Baron immediately. And then once it's ready to go again, I expect TSM to threaten that objective. Yeah, one of the only ways at this stage to throw the game would be caught, like you're saying, right there in front of the tower at the gates with Baron coming up in only a few seconds. So they call for the super defensive play here. Cooldown reduction at this stage in the game, not too shabby for Hanser. So that thing will be back up fairly shortly. And all TSM have to do now is stall and poke around. FlyQuest, they feel like they're trapped. They feel like they're forced into something desperate and they're gonna go for it. This time, we fully flip. Yes, and Hauntzer has no ulti. That's why FlyQuest is going in for it now. The objective bounty is claimed by Spica, but what about the fight after? Impact stuck in the middle of everyone. Boogie's at about 130 HP, but Impact gets away for now. Vic was going to be careful as the calling finds him. Impact still at half. They're waiting on Hauntzer. Boogie goes over the wall. He drops the Cataclysm. FlyQuest still not able to fire back just yet, but it's Vic Claw. He's been found by Hauntzer. And now that they've taken out one of the carries, TSM's going to look for some more. Insanity has to be mindful. That's a lot of Chakrams there on Prince. He'll disengage, still trying to find some of that poke. Long range Q takes half the, the time's health, but now they're gonna go for the end. It's a TP into the enemy base. TSM's just gonna stop the ports. It's old style trick 2G, stop them backs. As Spica tries to defend, the Nexus turrets are gone. The enemy jungler's gone, and FlyQuest cannot get home in time. Insanity and Hauntzer, the two solo lanes for team solo mid. Take the win against FlyQuest. TSM looking good with Insanity on stage. Well done, David. Quadra kill on the LeBlanc. They lost the AD carry, but won the big fight towards the Baron. And we're able to ride.